we have looked at sign in several different contexts, okay? So we first dealt with it when we were talking about solving right triangles, okay? We learned that sign is the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So that was the first time we dealt with sign. Uh, recently, we've looked at sign um, ratios with the unit circle. We learned that the sign of zero degrees or zero radians is zero. We learned that the sign of pi over six radians is one half. Okay, we learned that about the unit circle. Now we're going to look at sine as a function, so we're going to graph it. And in addition to that, we're going to translate or move this graph as well. There are several things that we need to know about it. So before we can move it, we need to just look at its graph. So you need to turn your paper so that it is wider as opposed to um, tall, okay? You need it wider because the graph of sine is going to kind of stretch out. It's what we call a periodic function. Now what a periodic function means is that it repeats itself. Okay, a periodic function repeats it. Okay, a periodic function repeats itself. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, we're going to label our x-axis here in radians. Okay, so obviously we start with zero at the origin, um, and we're going to end up at two pi. So you don't necessarily want to put two pi all the way at the edge of your paper, um, but you do want to count an even number of blocks. I would say uh, count 12 blocks, okay? Count 12 uh, little units there and put uh, two pi there, okay? So we're going to mark this off in quarters because remember from the unit circle we had some repeating, some patterns there. So halfway through at 6, we're going to put pi because pi is halfway to 2 pi. Okay, and then halfway between 0 and pi, we're going to put pi over 2. And halfway between pi and 2 pi, we're going to put 3 pi over 2. Okay, all those angles were on our unit circle. All right, so let's see here. 2 pi is about 6. So um, 6 units and 12 blocks. Okay, so you need to go, let's, let's label our y-axis now. Um, go up about, uh, let's say go up about 6 blocks. Okay, go up about 6 blocks and put one, go down about six blocks and put negative one. Now the reason why I'm only going up to one and negative one, is because think back to the unit circle. The values of sine that we got, we got zero, we got one half, we got square root two over two, which was about 0.7, we got square root of three over two, which was about 0.86, um, and so forth and so on. Actually, you know what? Go up 10 so we can count each block as a 10. I'm sorry. Go up 10 blocks so we can count each block as a 10. That makes more sense. Okay. <clears throat> I apologize for that. And then we got up to 1 and then we started counting back down. And then we got negative values. And we got down to negative 1 and we started counting back up to 0. All right. So go up, t up 10 blocks for a positive 1, down 10 blocks for negative 1. Okay. So. From our unit circle, the sine of zero was zero. So we're going to put a point on zero, zero, on the origin. Because we are graphing f of x equals sine of x. This is the function we're graphing right now, the sine of x. So when x is zero, the sine of zero is zero. When x is pi over 2 from your unit circle, what is the sine of pi over 2? Sine of pi over 2, sine is which co uh, coordinate? The x or the y? The y. So what's the y value at pi over 2? It helps if you're looking at your unit circle. At pi over 2, what's the y value? Destiny, you said it. 1. Okay. So at 1. So we've got the point at pi over 2. Your y value is 1. How about at pi? What's the y value? 
zero. Okay, at pi, the y value is zero. How about at three pi over two? Negative one. Okay, at two pi, we're at zero. All right, now we can fill in a whole lot more information. We, I didn't hit any of the values in each quadrant. I just hit uh, the four values on the axes. Um, but we could fill in values here, bless you, um, and at like pi over 6, which would be about right here, then the sine is 1 half. At pi over 4, the sine is about 0.7-ish. At pi over 3, it's uh, almost 0.9. Okay, so we could fill in this graph a little bit more detail, but pretty much, what I'm just going to tell you what happens. We get this curve that goes up to 1, and then the curve comes back down right here to 0 at pi, and then it comes right here, so 3 pi over 2, and then it comes back up to 0 at 2 pi. Okay, this is what we call one period of our sine function. Okay, that's what they call it. They call it the period. It's the, it's the length that it takes for sine to hit all of its possible values. We started at 0, 0. We went down to pi um, and ended back up at zero, and then we had to hit the negative values too. So that's one complete period or cycle. It may be called a cycle as well. And the length, the standard length of the period is two pi. Okay, so you need to be familiar with these terms. Because I don't know what they're going to ask you on the exam. I don't know if they're just going to ask you to graph it which I'm going to show you here on the calculator how you can do it as well, um, or if they're going to ask you something about its characteristics. So you need to be familiar with these different terms. So the period or the cycle is the distance that it takes to complete this part of the graph. Okay? Um, we can also talk about the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from the center of our graph Okay, see how it's kind of symmetric here? The center right now is the x-axis. The x-axis cuts this graph vertically in half, and so the distance to the top of the graph is 1. Okay, the standard amplitude is 1, and that's the distance from the midline This is the midline right here for this one to the max or the min. We can look at it either way. The midline is the x-axis, so if we go from the x-axis to the maximum, that's one unit. Or if we go from the midline to the minimum, it's one unit. Okay, amplitude is always positive. Amplitude is always positive. Always, always, always. Okay? And then in a minute, we're going to talk about a vertical shift, but we're not going to talk about that right at this moment um, because this one does not have vertical shift. It is centered on the x-axis, so there's no vertical shift going on here. Let me show you how your calculator will graph this, and um, I'll show you some of the properties here. So everybody needs to pull out the calculator. Make sure you are in radian mode. Okay? We can graph this in degree mode. We can. However, the standards do explicitly say that we need to know how to graph it in radian mode. Okay, that's what they're focusing on is graphing it in radians. So make sure you're in radian mode. Then go to your y equals and type in the sine of x. Okay, type in the sine of x and that's it. Now, before we press graph, we're going to adjust our window. Okay, so go to window. For our x values. Okay, for our x values, let's do this. Let's do negative pi. You can type that in there. When you press enter, it'll turn it into a decimal. But you can type in the pi. Okay, 
Okay, negative pi to, let's make our maximum 3 pi, or actually let's make it 4 pi, 4 pi, okay? Let's make it 4 pi because I want you to see this. Um, we marked it off every pi over 2 units, so that's what I'm going to put in for the x scale, pi over 2. Our y values do not need to be from negative 10 to 10 because ours only ranges from negative 1 to 1. Uh, so I'm going to make it negative 2 to 2 just so that I can kind of see it a little bit bigger. Okay, now you can press graph. So see how this is repeating itself? Okay, that's the, that's the periodic part of this. Um, it's repeating itself. We could have expanded this window. I just wanted to zoom in on this part of it. But we could have expanded this and we could have gone from negative 10 pi to positive 10 pi. Um, and we could have seen more of this repeating behavior. Um, but I said go from uh, stop at 4 pi. So you can see here are two cycles. There are two cycles that are completed in this 4 pi right here. Um, we only graph one of them. Okay? Our graph is not different from this. It's the same function. It's just we're zeroing in on a smaller portion of it. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the things that we can do to the graph of sine. And this is why um, I gave you some colored pencils. Because I want you to draw these on the same graph uh, because I want you to be able to compare it to the original. So somebody give me a number between uh, 1 and 5. Give me a number between 1 and 5. Three. Three. 3. 3 was the first one I heard. Okay. 3 was the first one I heard. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to graph a new function. We're going to say f of x is equal to 3 sine of x. I'm going to stick a number in front of my sine function. Now, <clears throat> let's put that in our calculator, okay? Put a 3 in front of your sine in your y equals. 3 sine of x. We're not going to mess with the window, okay? We're not going to mess with the window right now. Uh, we're just going to graph it as is. So, what appears to have happened compared to the first one? It spread it out. It spread it out. It got taller, right? Did it change horizontally at all? Does it appear to have changed horizontally? It may be kind of hard to see here. It did not. Okay, so we can't see our entire graph. We need to change our um, y minimum and maximum. Let's change it to negative 5 to positive 5. Okay, change your y minimum and y maximum to negative 5 and plus 5. Don't mess with the x's because I still want to see it the way that I did before. So this looks more like what we just graphed a second ago. Um, it did not change horizontally. It stretched it out vertically. Okay, so y equals 3 sine of x. The 3 affects the amplitude. So now, instead of negative 1 and positive 1 being our minimum and maximum, negative 3 and positive 3 are our minimum and maximum. So if I went to my table, <clears throat> now it's kind of hard to tell in the table. Let me show you something you may not know about. You can change your table. It doesn't have to count by once. I can press second window. And it'll let me change my table. It says table start. I still want it to start at zero. <clears throat> but I don't want it to count by one. So I want it to count by pi over two. Okay. So I'm going to put pi over two for my delta table. That's what that little triangle means. And then I'm going to go back to the table. And look at what I've got. I've got zero, three, zero, negative three, zero, three, zero, negative three. That's what we started with when we were graphing. So instead of hitting 1 and negative 1 as our maximums and minimums, it hits 3 and negative 3 as the maximums and minimums. So if you graphed this on the same uh, graph that you graphed before, and mine won't necessarily fit, but I'm going to try and make it look like it fits. Okay, the only thing that changes here is that it gets stretched out. It still hits... Uh, zero at the same